So I roll into this solo section with um, one of the many things I love um, that Eddie did and I incorporated. Um, and if you just, just in case you're wondering, hey, I watched that solo and how come he didn't tap? Hey, look, I love the way Eddie tapped, but um, it never translated to me in, in that fashion. Uh, so I'm coming in with... Oh. So I'm, I'm, I'm coming down, palm muting on the E string, and then flying off it to play that melody right here in the fifth position, just between those two. I guess this is the part where people would call Van Halen a heavy metal band, which I totally never thought of them that way. They're like the ultimate party rock band, but whatever. But um, so here's like a heavy metal moment. Now, I'm doing a little bit of a call and response thing. So in between that idea, uh, what I follow that with is coming here, and there's that big step and a half bend he did a lot in the early, especially uh, early on. Especially on Van Halen 1. You know, thinking like immediately, like, you really got me? That always stuck with me. I just love the way it feels. Like, just right here, third string at this fret. And then come down with... So, it's just a hammer-on pull-off as you come down with the bar. You know, the timing has got to be... After the pull-off is when you do the dive. Right? So... I follow that with coming back to the riff. And just get some of that chromatic descending thing. There's so many moments of him um, of doing that uh, in riffs. And there's also the partial, partial pinch harmonics where the thumb, the skin of your thumb is following the pick and just ever so slightly making contact. Uh, with the fifth string or that I'm on at this point. And it's always great on wound strings to do it this way. Uh, they just seem to go with this easier in this manner. So that's what I'm doing there. You know, I'm always thinking about the, um, the ultimate uh, example of that is the full bug. So that's, that's what I'm copping right there. It's just fun. It feels fun to play. But also in there... Speaking of harmonics, and sort of a, well, it's not a pinch harmonic, but it's the same idea. Uh, I'm doing another way of doing harmonics. And that is, I'm keeping this trill going on, this whole step trill going on right here as I come across the string. That's where the harmonics are being produced. And I'm getting multiple ones because I'm moving. Um, I can swear I saw that. I can't give you a pinpoint exactly where that is, but I can swear I saw that on the live without a net stuff, you know, when they, the first live stuff with Sammy. Um, but then from there, I'm getting into dyads, two note instances. And um, Eddie was always putting them on fourth and third string adjacent sets. And also, Second and third adjacent stats. So with his sound, whether you're looking at the Roth ear or the Brown sound, or you're, you're listening to, um, you know, more of the, let's say, the process sound of the Hagar years, love them both. But either way, he made that sound. So when you play stuff like this, it sounded so awesome. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. Uh, you know, and this is more of a Brown sound type of thing. You know, to get that thing, I'm I, as soon as I discovered what that is, I was obsessed with it, and I have been ever since, and I always do that. So continuing that obsession with um, these double stops, I go up here to the 12th position and get some action going on. It's similar between 12th and 7th positions. Uh, again, it's all going back to that, that obsession with dyads. But um, when I'm here, that, um, I'm thinking of... Um, you know, from 51.50. But, uh, it, it, you know, just give me two strings. Give me two adjacent strings, and I'm, and I'm going to do that, especially these higher ones. Um, and that's really where it is. It's the timbre of those higher strings, four and three, three and two, um, where that sound comes from. Now, continuing the obsession, and also going back to that, that I love, you know, the way that the, uh, uh, when you get sort of in the zone of a brown sound, there's something about the, the squish of a low E string, a, a muted low E string. So I got that going on with 
with those awesome perfect fourths that are played on the third and second string. And I'm just coming up, like, I'm thinking in my head, there's a D shape, but not with the third on top. So it's that bottom two notes from, from that, from D to E to G to A. So, whoops. I, I can do that all day. It's, it's the funnest thing uh, ever. So right along with the obsession with dyads, it's triads. And that is uh, definitely in part uh, due to Eddie. Um, he was the master of triads, just closed voice, one, three, fives, or, you know, uh, inversions, three, five, one, five, one, three, on the four, three, two string set, primarily. So I'll give you something like this. So what I'm doing there is coming down, you know, the ever so famous sus four to major, you know, um, I mean, there's so many uh, uh, great examples of this. Um, Panama, uh, Unchained, stuff. But So what I'm doing here is giving you E, and also going along with typical, and I love the sound of Van Halen, um, voice leading and also just general chord progression. So we have this E thing going on, uh, you know, this Dirty Movies vibe in E, and I got E, D, A, G, D. So he always was giving you those um, mixolydian uh, chord progressions. I mean, but Eddie could basically sell a major chord anywhere over anything. And that's what uh, was going on here. So I'm doing ideas like that. I did an idea like that. And then I come up and play a <laughs> 12th position, a 12th position uh, thing that's based in what we magazine writers and, you know, other people have called it the Van Halen scale. It's a symmetrical fingering that consists of a half step and a whole step. And it mostly resides on the fifth, the fourth, the third, and second strings where I just played it. And uh, there's many iterations of how he manipulates it. And one of the coolest things is the fact that it never sounded like the same thing. I mean, yeah, it's similar, but he always was able to give you a different version of it, which was... That's, that's amazing. Just look on Van Halen Wonders. There's so many examples of it. A lot of times at the end of tunes, never the same. So what I'm doing is this. Slow. You know, something very close to that. Um, so the way to position a Van Halen scale is wherever key, you know, we're in E, e minor, E major, E minor. Um, so let's, let's picture that. The scale is one half step in position lower than that. So if I'm here, then this is going to be here. And that zone right there, that's the most important part of it right there. That's chromatic. And that's where you hear a lot of those awesome licks, similar to the one I just played. You know, that sound, you guys... And it's that same fingering, and it's just a lot of ways to manipulate it. You know, another common way, and I love to do, which is a little bit of that's in there, too. So from there, um, get some more triads. E with the sus4. D with the 6. Go down to C. To G, first inversion G. And then return to my obsession of playing uh, perfect fourths. And then we'll go up here, back to 12th position. And get, you know, the focus there is the overbend. Uh, it's what I, this is a thing I, I, I call on that. So what I mean is, if you're thinking of a typical unison bend, or just a bending instance where... You got the bend plus the pitch that you're bending to. Well, the bend is going past that pitch. You know, going up about two steps, sometimes two and a half steps. He did that throughout his entire existence. Was always doing that overbend. That is like very, very Van Halen. It's and uh, it's a, it's a lot of fun to play. Then I move on to unison bends. Um, 
Van Allen's not the only guy I heard play unison bends, but I love the way that he would play them as melodies, ascending melodies. You know, think the end of Hot for Teacher. You know, I'm surprised I didn't go into a uh, tremolo picking thing, but so whole step, half step, two whole steps. Then after that, um, I got into something um, that uh, is a is one of Eddie's um, admitted obsessions, his, one of his inspirations, and that was Alan Holdsworth. Um, if you didn't know this, if it wasn't for Eddie, we might not even we might not know who Alan Holdsworth is. It was Eddie that went and made sure that he got a record contract, and that's how IOU um, came out to the world, thankfully. I mean, he was making a name with Tony Williams, but it was Eddie Van Halen that put him on the map. And uh, yeah, I would too if I heard this guy. So Eddie started doing these extended licks. Um, so what I did here is um, it's a single string step and a half intervals. You know, there's myriad ways you can do it. But what I'm basically doing is as He's getting some forward, backward, you know, some rolling legato. Remember, uh, 50 Rock Licks, you must know. And getting some ghost hammers. And then whenever he did that stuff, though, he was always good at, at um, he was always consistent with giving you a resolution. So he would never just leave that there like, like Hallsworth would. But, you know, that's two completely different worlds. Um, so Van Halen would always resolve that with something you know, rock and roll and just and just bring you back into the the greatest party rock environment ever ever created. So you know, I'm back into twelfth position, E minor pentatonic, and um and that's how I take it out. Hey, for some great moments with that that extended stuff, uh listen to um nineteen eighty four, House of Pain, um and um the last two tracks, House of Pain and uh it wasn't drop. It was drop. Yeah, drop dead legs. Um, he plays some of his most out and best, most creative experimental stuff in those two tunes right there, and you'll hear a lot of this there. So we're just trying to pay homage to that and uh, and do it my way, and it's uh, it's fun. Just be careful. The stretch is a little uh, quasi dangerous, so don't do this all day and uh, and come to me crying.